friends, and welcome back to my Soft Pink Muppet Hands. Uh, this week we're going to be taking a look at the Artex Jelly Gouache set 18B. Now this, I believe, is a private label, kind of like Ohuhu markers. I've talked about private labeling with alcohol markers before, and all that means is that several different brands are buying paint from the same factory and then putting their own personal branding on it. You may have seen other jelly gouaches under the brand Himi Mia, which I believe is the same. I had the 18A set from them, and it performs very similarly. Here are the colors in the B set. It has a couple more pastels and like weird colors, and so I got it wanting to experiment with those. I've at this point given away my Himi Mia gouache set, so I was interested in checking out this color palette. Uh, so I tried to get them out like neatly, and then I just dumped it all on the table because I have no patience. And here comes all of the little jelly gouaches. I didn't want to um, make y'all watch me sit and peel everyone apart, but I did set the little lids aside because they all had paint on them. So I decided I would use those for the swatching. And here we go. Um, so the first thing you might notice is this set has two whites in it. I believe the same is true of the other, the 18A set. They have a white and a titanium white. The difference between the regular white and the titanium white is the thickness. Regular white is a thinner paint and it's better for mixing. And titanium white is a more opaque, thicker paint and it is stronger at tinting your other colors. I actually did not know that before I was doing this voiceover. Honestly, I probably should have looked it up. It would have helped in the painting process. Uh, but now you know, and I actually looked something up for once to do my voiceover. I will also give some general advice for these paints. Once you have taken off the lids of all of the different paints. Do not store this paint sideways, um, which might seem very intuitive, uh, but if you're me, you'd be wrong because I'm very silly and I stored these sideways and by the time I start the painting it's a couple of weeks later and my paints have kind of smeared into each other. Another thing I noticed is I've had this paint sitting for a month or two uh, with the lids on before I started doing the swatching and some of the binder and pigment had separated so there was kind of like an oily film, but I was able to mix everything with just like the back end of a paintbrush and it came back together okay. And the next time I opened it, they had separated again a little bit. It seemed to be worse in the more pastel colors for whatever reason. I don't know if I got a bad batch or if that's just a side effect of the process, but here's all the colors, compare them to the swatch below, uh, proving once again that you should always, always swatch your colors because swatch sheets are useless. So today we're gonna be painting a a Clefairy. Clefairy is one of my favorite Pokemon, and I am a Clefairy, um, perhaps physically too. You guys don't know what it looked like. Wait, you do. My Pokemon video has my face in it. Anyway, um, I'm gonna start by doing an underpainting with the Prima Essence palette. This is from the Prima Confections watercolor collection, and I started by doing this underpainting because I wanted to get my values down before I switched into a medium that I'm not as familiar with, which is gouache. Um, I don't really use gouache. I've never really learned how, and so I watched some videos on how to use gouache before attempting to make this one. This will not really be a review of the paints. I will give you some impressions of them, but I don't have a good baseline knowledge of how gouache is supposed to feel when it's high quality. So I'm not going to recommend for or against buying these paints. If you do want to buy them, there is a link in the description that is an affiliate link for my Amazon account. Uh, I do not uh, have a sponsorship with this company, but if you use my affiliate link, I get a little bit of a kickback from Amazon on if you buy it. So this picture is one of the pictures I took in Pokemon Snap. I've been playing it with my wife since it came out and I really love it. I actually filmed this video a couple of weeks ago but I had all that Kickstarter stuff that I wanted to show you guys before so I've kind of just been sitting on this one. Uh, I am, <laughs> spoilers, only kind of middlingly happy with how this comes out in the end but I learned a lot from just playing with gouache and a new medium so we will go through all of those struggles together and I will roast myself when we get to the parts that I think are worthy of roasting. I can give you my opinion on the Prima Essence palettes. Um, I have used several of those and I do know enough about watercolor to know how they perform and they perform really well. I think they're somewhere between student and artist grade paints. Um, I don't know how light fast they are, though I believe they claim to be light fast, but these are marketed more towards crafters and people who use watercolor more for scrapbooking and that kind of hobby stuff rather than serious painters, but I have seen 
seen a lot of serious painters use it who really like it, and I am one of them. Um, I really like just having these palettes. They have interesting curated collections of colors, and the palettes are all very good for mixing. Some of them are rather limited, like this one doesn't have a lot in the brighter color category. It's a very moody palette, but I really like it for that. They also have like a tropical palette, which I have, and some others in many other different palettes and things. And they have just like a basic one. Uh, it's a really fun little set to play with. The paints are really highly pigmented and really easy to activate. So I definitely recommend those. And there's a link to the, this particular palette in the description as well, though they do have a bunch of other color sets. I believe I have Essence Tropical Vintage Pastels and their complexion set, which is their skin tones. The only one I don't really recommend is the complexion set, incidentally. I don't really ever use it. Um, and it's better for you to just learn how to mix skin tones. And none of the paints in that set are good for skin tones right out of the pan. Like you do still need to mix them a bit with each other. So it seems kind of like a, an extra step to buy a specific skin tone palette if I'm already gonna mix them anyway. So I recommend just getting one of their other palettes to play with. Uh, my favorite one is the Essence palette. So that is my plug for Primo Watercolor Confections. Oh, one other thing about Primo Watercolor Confections actually, um, the pigment information is all available on their website. And like I said, they do claim to be pretty light fast. So that is good. Uh, the one thing that you might find frustrating if you are a veteran watercolor user is that all of the paints have cutesy little names like city names or types of pies or things. So while the pigment information is there, it doesn't have standard names like Prussian blue and stuff um, and the stuff you might be used to as a watercolor artist. So that's just something to look out for. And now we're finally at the part of the video where I'm actually using the gouache. So as I said, I am not a gouache artist, a guartist. That's terrible. Um, <laughs> so I can't really give much advice or insight onto the quality of these paints. I know that they are student grade and they don't really have a lot of light fastness information, but they do have the pigment information on the swatch card, which I thought was a really nice touch. And I can give you a couple of beginner's tips, but that's about where I become useless. <laughs> so step one from what I have gathered from my studies is to start with light washes of paint, almost as if you're still using watercolor. So you'll see here I'm dabbing up a lot because I keep going heavier than I mean to with the paint uh, because gouache is a lot more opaque than watercolor and I'm still getting used to the consistency. Um, but you wanna start with light washes and go to heavier applications later in the painting on the higher layers. I don't remember quite why you do it that way. It might have something to do with the paint cracking, um, but I wanted to pass on the only gouache advice I can really give you. This is only my like third or fourth gouache painting at all and the only one that I've ever shared publicly. So I'm definitely still learning and I'm looking forward to learning and I'll probably do more videos in the future uh, as I am figuring out how to use gouache and give you guys whatever one or two tips I have learned in that session. But yeah, this one was mostly just an exercise in learning about the consistency and how these paints layer and trying not to overwork it because I found that I was doing that quite a bit and I ended up losing some really good contrast in shapes later in this painting because I kept going back over it and I just, you know, went way further than I needed to. Um, I've also been doing a lot more digital work lately, mostly in Adobe Illustrator. And that I think has had me getting less used to working with real materials where I don't have an undo button and I can't really adjust it afterwards. So I'm getting back into my groove here. I've been doing a ton of pin design as you all probably have noticed from my channel. So I have kind of uh, been neglecting my paint, including my watercolors. The watercolor comes back to me a lot more easily in general. Yeah, a lot of this was just a matter of trying to learn to be more patient. Gouache takes a lot longer to dry than watercolor, or maybe it's not a lot longer, but it felt a lot longer to my time-blind ADHD brain. So it was a lot of learning to be patient, not overworking things, and remembering that gouache dries to a different shade than when you put it down, which is true of watercolor, but gouache shifts in the other direction. Uh, watercolor gets lighter as it dries and gouache gets darker as it dries. So I would find myself 
putting down what I thought was a fairly light area and then I would come back in 10 minutes and be like, well, that's several shades darker than I needed it to be. Uh, and then I would try to go in and correct it with highlight layers because gouache is opaque, you can go over it again. And then I would mess that up too and it wouldn't be light enough. It was just kind of a mess and we're gonna go through it together. I also don't know what I was thinking with the shapes in the mountain area behind Clefairy. Like I was working from a reference in front of me and that's not what it looks like, but I decided that I was gonna paint these weird shapes and I don't love how they look or came out but by the end of the painting, there's enough other stuff going on that I don't think it's a big deal. I'm not gonna be selling this as a print or anything, but uh, it's not as bad as I thought it was when I was working on it. Another thing that I noticed with myself with gouache is that I'm a lot more shy about mixing my colors for some reason. Like obviously I've been mixing this whole time and I do mixes, but for some reason like, so this palette doesn't have a pink color in it, but it has white and it has red, so I could have made a pink color, but I went with this lavender. I mean, the colors in this picture in Pokemon Snap are really desaturated, so it's more of a blue than a pink, so the lavender ended up working okay for that effect, but like, I kept forgetting that I was allowed to make new colors and not just tint the ones that already existed, uh, so that was a weird thing. Uh, hurdle to overcome because obviously I mix in watercolor all the time. That's what you do with paint. You mix them. Um, also ignore that left eye that I'm tr desperately trying to cover up here. By the end I've managed to fully hide my error. <laughs> but uh, the right side of the paper was drier than the left side just in that Clefairy in that one inch of space. So when I made the first eye, it came out really nice and really crisp. And then I went to the left one and it just spread out on the page and was gross. So I ended up going over it uh, approximately a billion times to cover it up with this like lavender color paint that I'm putting on the Clefairy. And I think that ultimately ended up screwing me over a little bit because uh, really that purpley color that I'm using for the shading is closer to the color that the Clefairy is. I should have mixed that with a bunch of white and used that as the base tone instead of this more pink purple. Um, I think it's lilac on the palette. And so the whole picture ends up not looking like the lighting is correct. I was trying to emulate the lighting in the original picture and I didn't. I just kind of made it like it was a uh, full light photo, uh, which is hard for me to do. I've been trying to push my lighting skills a lot. It's something that I find easier to do in digital because you can just throw on another layer and call it a day. <laughs> but in traditional, you have to be really selective about your colors and it's hard to learn to paint what you see and not what you think you see. So my brain is like, well, I know Clefairy is pink, so obviously I've got to put this pinky lilac in there. Whereas in reality, there's almost no pink in the original painting. Uh, and I am Boo Boo the Fool, and that's just uh, the life I have to live in now. <laughs> but you know, we live, we laugh, we learn, live, laugh, love, uh, and it's fine. Uh, this is the part of the painting that every painting has where it's ugly for a while. Uh, and I just want to encourage you that if you're starting to learn to paint, in any medium, just make peace with the fact that your painting is going to suck for most of the painting process. This is true of every painting from every skill level, from beginner to master. The middle parts of paintings just look bad and it's okay. It's not bad. It's just not finished yet. So just keep going and be persistent. And that is my mini pep talk for this video. I bring this up this time in particular because as I was getting into the ugly stage of this painting, I started to panic. And it was just because I'm not used to working in gouache and so I'm not used to what the ugly stage of a gouache painting looks like, like I am with watercolor, but it's okay. Now everyone look at these beautiful shadows that I'm putting on this rock before I accidentally go over them and ruin it and I miss it forever. <laughs> And yep, there it goes, tail as old as time. The Sycharis flew too close to the sun and now that rock is ugly forever. Uh, so yeah, at this point I start going in with darker values because I'm hoping that adding more contrast will save this painting from being awful. Uh, and like I said, I'm middlingly satisfied with how this painting turned out. It's not terrible, it's not great, but I'm a beginner, so it's totally fine. 
Um, and I'm trying to start putting in the lighting effects that are around the Clefairy because she's like glowing in this picture. And it's not working because I keep forgetting how much lighter I need to make the gouache. Um, by the end, I start going with colored pencils and gel pens to make that effect work because I just wasn't having any luck with it. And I also started at this point mixing in that dark blue from the Prima Essence palette again because I was having issues with the blues that were actually in this palette. Um, oh, you can see I'm trying to make the lighting look correct and I'm not going to succeed. <laughs> at the end, I'll show you a photoshopped version where I fix the lighting a little bit. Um, but the darkest blue in this palette is a warmer blue, I think, and I needed a cooler one. So I went back to the Prima palette and I started mixing that with the gouache because you can mix watercolor and gouache together. It will just make the watercolor opaque. So if you're, you know, taking gouache and putting it in watercolor, just keep that in mind. But if you're taking watercolor and putting it in gouache, it doesn't really make it much less transparent than it already will be. So uh, you are safe to do that. Another gouache tip uh, that I can give is to, if you are not used to working with gouache, try to let it dry for longer than you normally would before you go back in. I was having trouble working with wet on wet gouache paint and I kind of wish that I had waited between my layers a little bit more than I did. I think at this point the reason that the camera shifted is because I did walk away and let everything dry completely before I continued and I found it a lot easier to work with in that stage than I did when I was trying to layer wet paint on wet paint because it was just kind of all sloshing together and I was losing the values. Basically it was mixing the colors on the page with the adjacent colors and I assume that more experienced gouache artists are allowed to do that. I mean, they're allowed, but that they can do that without it being as much of an issue. But I found it easier to work wet into dry than wet on wet, which uh, in watercolor I mix between the two, but because watercolor dries so much faster, uh, I can kind of get away with applications faster than I can with gouache. And I found that frustrating because I am a very impatient person. Rarely spend more than about two hours on any given piece of artwork. Um, and sometimes up to four if I'm getting really involved in like doing a full background painting and it's on a bigger canvas. Um, but gouache doesn't really work that way. And so that's just something that I'm gonna need to learn to adapt to because I really want to continue with gouache. I want to learn how to use it better. I have a lot of ideas for what I want to do with gouache. I just need to learn to be a little more patient because even this tiny little painting, like this is a small sketchbook, uh, took me three or four hours to complete and that just drove me up the wall. <laughs> I imagine I will get faster as I continue, but also I just need to learn that this is a slower medium than my other mediums of choice and that that's okay and learn to embrace that a little bit more and pace myself. Failing that, I will just crawl into a hole forever and eat gouache paint to gain its power. <laughs> but I have other gouache paints that I want to test out on this channel. I have uh, an acrylic gouache set actually that I really want to play with more. I have only really used it to do corrections so far on other paintings um, that are watercolor or marker even because they're very opaque and easy to use. And I believe acrylic gouaches dry faster than traditional gouache. And once they are dry, they are permanent and don't reactivate. So I think I will have an easier time with those, but I have no idea because I haven't done a full painting with them yet. Um, but when I do, I will film it and I will put it on the channel so you all can see me struggle and maybe we can learn a little something together. Um, thankfully, we're at the point in this painting, we're getting pretty close to the end and I was at least okay with how it had come out. The lighting doesn't look like my reference picture, but the lighting looks better than it did earlier. It doesn't look like this is in full sun. It does look dim. It just doesn't have the blue tint of nighttime. It looks more like it's shaded daytime light, but I can live with that. And that's what doing things in Photoshop after they're done is for. Um, I'll show you guys, like I mentioned earlier, I threw this into Photoshop when I was finishing up my editing for the video and I put a blue filter on it to make it look a little more like the reference and I think it looks fine now. So I am okay with where this went. Um, now this step was a little tricky. This again, I went back in to try to make that little glow around the Clefairy again and it's a pretty 
stark light effect. I actually don't really know how one would achieve this in a non-digital format. I'm gonna try to replicate it sometime in my sketchbook with markers or maybe even watercolor and see if I can make it work because I really want to learn how to render out that kind of lighting effect on paper. Um, and here I'm gonna try to do it with colored pencils too. And I don't manage to match what the reference looks like, but I managed to get it to look like it was glowing at least. So I'll take it, it's something. Um, but I really want to learn how to do more lighting effects in traditional art. So I'm gonna keep working at it. And if I ever master it, I'll make a video tutorial. And if I don't master it, I'll make a video of me failing at it and we can still learn from that. <laughs> I think if I were to do this painting again, what I would do is limit myself to one or two colors of paint. So maybe like a blue tone and then a white and a black and see how much of the painting I can do basically in monochrome with one little color tinting in there. Um, and then go in at the very end and do light washes of color over some areas and maybe that would help with that really desaturated nighttime look but you know I'll give it another shot another time and hopefully at some point I will learn how to do it but at least at this point we all get to look at a cute little Clefairy uh, even if the lighting is different but I mean now you can just see more Clefairy detail you can see her beautiful pink coat and uh, she's smiling because she's happy to see you and yeah that's the end of that painting uh, so here is what the original looked like, here is my painting next to it, and here it is with the filter to make it look a little bit more like it's nighttime. And uh, yeah, like and subscribe to support Clefairy, do it for her, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye